Welcome to Electron Online and to get a better understanding of the EMF and how it relates to a circuit and the load resistor, let's do a graphical representation. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. So what we're doing here is we're going to represent the voltage from A to B, the voltage across the battery from A to B, under different load resistor conditions. So from the load resistor being equal to zero to a large value. And the same thing, we're going to look at the current to the circuit in respect to the uh, load resistor again, from the load resistor being equal to zero to the load resistor being uh, a maximum value or a large value. So notice that the EMF is equal to 5 volts, that's the voltage that the battery provides. And again, the EMF is equal to the voltage from A to B when there's no load resistor and there's no current flowing through the circuit. Actually, better said, there's no current flowing through the circuit. So if there's no current flowing through the circuit, there's no voltage drop, and the voltage from A to B is simply equal to the EMF. So there's no current, means the voltage drop is simply equal to the EMF. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to try and graph this relationship between the load resistor and the voltage between A and B. So when we close the circuit and there's no load resistor, so in the case that R sub L is equal to zero, then the current in the circuit will simply be equal to the EMF provided by the battery divided by the total resistance, which in this case would only be the, the internal resistance of the battery. So that would be equal to five volts divided by one ohm, which is equal to five amps. Okay, so we know then that when the load resistor is zero, the current here will be 5 amps, that's the EMF divided by the resistance, that will be the current right here. And then we can say that the voltage from A to B, the voltage from A to B, will be equal to the EMF minus the voltage drop, which is the current, 5 amps, times the internal resistance of 1 ohm, so that would be equal to 5 volts minus 5 volts, which will be 0 volts, which means if there's no low resistor, then all the voltage will, will be dropped across the internal resistance, and then we can see that the voltage will be equal to zero volts. What happens when the low resistor equals one ohm? Okay, so in the next case, so if R sub L equals one ohm, what happens now? Then you know that the current I is equal to the EMF divided by the total resistance. Now the total resistance will be both the load resistor plus the internal resistance, which is five ohms, divided, uh, not five ohms, but five volts, five volts divided by two ohms, which is 2.5 amps. So when the load resistor is one ohm, the current will be two and a half amps. And on the other hand, the voltage between A and B, notice the voltage between A and B will be five volts minus Okay, now it'll be two and a half amps times internal resistance, so that means that the volts between A and B will be five volts from the EMF minus the current, 2.5 amps, times the internal resistance of one ohm, that would be five volts minus 2.5 volts, or 2.5 volts. So what happens on this graph is as the load resistor gets bigger and bigger, the current keeps increasing. I mean, the current keeps decreasing and the voltage from A to B keeps increasing. So we have one ohm on the load resistor, and then we have a voltage between A and B of two and a half volts. So you can see that the voltage will increase like this, logarithmic, and the current will decrease like this, down to virtually zero, of course, when the load resistor becomes very large. So here you have a graphical picture. First, when the load resistor is very small, most of the voltage will drop across the resistor, so therefore the total voltage from A to B is almost zero. As the load resistor gets bigger, more and more voltage drops across the load resistor, less and less voltage across the internal resistor, and the voltage from A to B gets larger. And essentially, in the end, when the load resistor takes most of the voltage, almost no voltage drops across the, the, uh, the internal resistance, and the voltage from A to B will then become equal to the EMF. And that's how we do that.